It's time to unleash the Dark Dragon of the Abyss! Stand up! Bangano! Hello Cardfighters! About two weeks ago, AL4, the Psyche team, was released in Japan. And with that, we got access to four new clans in the standard format. Shadow Pendulum, Dark Regulars, Pill Moon and Murakumo. And it means we have four new clans and with their support to talk about in upcoming set reviews. And today we're going to tackle none other than Suzukamori Ren's Shadow Paladin. And like every other set review, we're going to uh, rate them according to the 5 star system. And I'm going to glass over the triggers, the starter, the PGs and all the same things that every clan got support in basically the first wave of standard. Also, unlike the uh, last set review that I did for United Champions of the Asia Circuit, I'm not gonna talk about the, their entire skills and reading them from the cards because I did it in that video because I didn't really know at the time when I was shooting the videos that I was going to add uh, the skills in post-production on the videos like I did in the last video in, in, the, in those set reviews. So knowing that, that I'm going to add them on the screen to the, to the right of me. I'm only going to uh, talk about the skills of, or I'm going to read certain sections if it's necessary for me to explain what I'm talking about or why I'm rating a card or something like that. Alright, with that out of the way, let's start in this set of review because we have a lot of cards to talk about. Because not only the set, they have 16 cards, but we also got 14 different cards in the trial deck. So, 30 cards in total. And yeah, let's begin. Just like I said, the triggers, uh, just the vanilla triggers, two stars to all of those. Then next we have the starter, in this case that's full bow, and just like the other starters, four stars. Alright, now we're getting to the unique cards for Shadow Pedalin, and the first one from the trial deck is Witch of Nostrum Aryan Rot, or how you are supposed to pronounce that name. And this is an interesting card that can basically you can rest her and in, in the main phase because an activity and you can give power away. And that is handy for uh, how Shelpen is working at this point in standard. Is that they are retiring during the main phase instead of during the attack phase that we're used to in G. Meaning that resting rearguards in the main phase, it, it sounds bad, but at the same time you're sacking them and retiring them anyway. So if you can get some advantage out of them, that's pretty good. But in this case, the Soul Blast is pretty heavy, and it's a 6k body, so yeah, it's handy to give the power, it's quite significant, and you can add it on your uh, VR, your Phantom Bluster Dragon, but then again, I don't think it's that great, so only 2 stars. Alright, next up we've got the normal PG, 2 stars, let's move on. Alright, now we're good to Bluster Javelin, and it's I think one of those uh, key cards for the current Shadow Paladin deck if you're focusing on Blusters, and... Its skill is pretty nice because with the amount of great ones you're going to have on, a, on the rearguard circle or your field is basically you can count plus one and draw a card. And they, those are the skills that you want in Oracle Think Tank to have a card advantage. So having that even in a force clan. So I think it's a very decent strong card. Now I'm going to give it four stars for Blessed Javelin. Alright next up we've got Full Bow. Full Bow. And it's basically a unit that can give power away when it boosts it and it hits the Vanguard. But you, it's an on hit and costs a counter blast, and you give basically minor amount of power away. And you want, you don't really have that amount, great crazy amount of counter charge options. So you want to be careful with uh, the counter blast that you have. So wasting it for just a minor power increase isn't really that great. And it's also an on hit when it boosts it. So I personally only give this card two stars because I think there are way better options for great ones. And the counter blast is also quite wasteful in the amounts that you can do with other cards that have way more potential with only one counter blast. But we're going to see those cards in a second. All right, next up we've got basically the main card of the trial deck. It's not the boss monster, but the main card of the trial deck, and that's Blaster Dark. And yeah, uh, I've seen a lot of people being divided about the card and basically divided about how Shell Paladin works. But I think it's a pretty decent. Well, it's a it's a goddamn strong card, if you ask me. Because it is a cheaper uh, Blaster Blade Retire card. Because it's only a Counter Blast to Retire unit. And sure, your uh, opponent can choose to rearguards, but at the same time, you can use it to your advantage and see what they're going to retire. And with that, you can calculate what kind of cards they have in hand or what they can miss or what not. So. 
depending on how you can play the game and how you can play that card, it can be even better. And also that rear guard, that other effect on the Vanguard Circle that can get an extra dry check is also very good if you're running a lot of crits. Because you can basically heighten the chance that you're going to crit sack early game with a train drive on your grade 2. And because you're also retiring, the only way for your opponent to counter this is to add more cards on the field. But at the same time, because they're doing that, you can use his retire skill and be able to retire something. Because what you have a problem with some Kagero decks is that your opponent isn't calling anything. So you're wasting your rear guards on place effects or all those effects to retire something because they don't have any. But because of Bluster Dark's skill, they are basically forced to call cards early on in the field to, to deny you that effect. But at the same time, because they have rear guards, you can then retire them with your other skills. So definitely very versatile and very annoying to play around. So I give it per five stars. All right, next up we've got the Vanilla Blaster X and it's just bad, one star. I don't think you're gonna use it. Maybe for the Blaster name, but then again, I don't think so. All right, next up we've got Witch of Calamity Immer. And the skill is pretty decent. It's pretty okay to get against 5k for when you call something and that's basically you're gonna do that every turn because you're retiring also stuff from your own field. So as a 50k attacker, can become a 23k attacker with an 8k booster, just like the uh, Royal Paladin 15k uh, vanilla cards. So I think it's a decent card and I give it 3 stars for that. Alright, next up we've got the first grade 3 of the trial deck and that's Smashing Knight Domain. And these are one of those cards that are a little bit uh, what people think is a little bit awkward about Shadow Paladin. Because some are requiring you to have more rear guards and the others less rear guards because you're retiring stuff. But you're also retiring of your own so it makes things a little bit weird to play around. And it got the force marker, that's a plus. But then again, it's a rear guard grade 3 and it doesn't really do that much. And the amount of power that it gains is also not really that high, so I give it only two stars because it's just a, a fill, filler card for the trial deck. Not, nothing special, nothing more than that. All right, now we're getting to the boss monster and final card of the trial deck, and that's the Dark Dictator. And oh boy, there was a lot of discussion and debate about this card, and uh, got a lot of hate. Seen a lot of hate on the internet. But I personally like, I really like this card because it's, uh, it basically works like the old, uh, the old Dictator and this with all this whole Shadow Paladin set release. There really works, it works like the old Shadow Paladin, not the Shadow Paladin that we're used to in G, but literally the old way how Shadow Paladin worked. And this is basically how that same Dictator works, that it gains power continuous by the amount of rigor that you have, so it can net a plus 10 with the full field, but you can also boost it, so it can become maybe a 33k column without even a force marker. That's pretty significant. But also, his other skill is pretty decent that it can, you, for one counter blast, you can call rear guards, give it 5k, and you can also retire something from your opponent. So you can add power to the field, and also retire something for only one counter blast. That's pretty good. It's not game defining or game breaking that guard in that regard, but it's pretty damn good. So for that I give it a, definitely a four star card because it's a very versatile card. You can basically sit on it for longer pe periods in the game and it just does what it does and it is a good pressure card. All right, next we're going to the first cards of the set and the comments, the first one for the comments we have the night we have nightmare painter and it's an interesting card that on place you can put a, a low color low grade card a grade one or a zero from your drop zone into your soul and this unit becomes a 10k booster for the turn it's pretty it it's it's a pretty decent effect that maybe will be useful in the future but as of now soul isn't really that of great of an issue and we have another card that can put go into the soul and that's is more viable now with the deck but the way that you can soul charge basically a card from a drop zone is pretty good because you're not minusing on the field and you're also not blindly soul charging a card from your deck so you don't have the potential that you waste a top trigger and you can just put a trigger from your drop zone into, into the deck and as of now we don't have cycle recycle cards so that's fine to do that only sad part is is that it's a 7k but it becomes a 10k booster and it's an on place so Maybe if it was a main phase skill, was then it would be very good card. But now it's a little bit. Nah, it's okay. Two stars for now. I can see it will work in the future, but for now it's not really that necessary because we have other options. 
And it's just a fine, fine, fine deck card if you want to run it, though. All right, next up we've got Abyss Rotor, and yeah, it's I, I'm not really fond of this card because you're wasting soul to call to call some something from your hand, and it needs to be grade zero. So you basically said, all right, and wasting a guard option, a trigger, and a soul bless to draw a card, and drawing is fine. But soul blasting excessively and also wasting a trigger from your hand uh, is not really that great because you're a force clan. So you want to save your triggers for the guard potential. And it's also a 7k body. So yeah, I'm not really that fond of the card. It it it's basically has everything that I don't like on a card. And especially in Shadow Paladin. So that's why I only give it one star. Alright, next up we have Infest Falcon. And this is a card that is actually a vanilla card. But... When you use its skill, it you can use its skill if you want to, but then it basically dies at the end of the battle. And it's a 30, 13k uh, booster or attacker. No, it's, uh, it's a 30k booster, and then it dies. Not really that fond of it now, because everything is going to be retired in the main phase. And if you then also are retiring in your own uh, battle phase and not putting more uh, units on the field, you're sitting on an empty field at the end of the turn and with not a lot of draw options if you're running this also as a grade one. So that's why I only give it two stars because I don't really see it work for now, but maybe with a combination of a certain card it can become useful to use its skill. But you don't want to be wa wasting all your rear guards con uh, every turn because you need to keep filling the hand uh, your hand and the field somehow. So. It's a little bit tricky on that part. All right, next up we've got maybe the worst card of Shadow Paladin in the in the set and draw deck, and that's Mage of Destruction of uh, Weidlich. Yeah, you you can see the skill there. It's a nine K grade two in a forest clan, and it has that kind of skill. It's you can still can retire it. It can only not be attacked. But why would you want to attack that thing? Just leave it on the field. They have better grade twos. Those you want to kill, not this thing. One star, let's move on. All right, next up we have Tragic Knight Cuffbat. And it basically gets more power and amount of more rigors that you have than your opponent. And we have seen this in Narukami with their G-Guard that uh, has the same effect that you can retire more rear guards uh, if they have more rear guards. And this one is just gains more power. And it's, uh, they will also have another grade three, Fear Knight Loic, that has the same skill. And it's a little bit awkward in Shadow Paladin because you're retiring your own stuff and then you have to need to have more than your opponent. So it's a little bit awkward in that sense. But I think it can work because you have also a lot of retire options and the amount of that you are retiring is in your main phase. So you can build up your field before you're going to attack. So that's why I'm going to give it three stars because it's it's a solid it's a solid grade too because it can easily become a 60k attacker and maybe even a 90k attacker. Alright, next up we have Knight of uh, Isolation, Oingus. Its skill makes it um, yeah, a 20k beat stick, but to have that you have no rear guards, or it has to be yeah, it has to be the only rear guard on the field. So if you're using its skill, you're basically only attacking with the Vanguard on this thing. And in a force clan, you don't want to be um, downgraded to only one or two attacks. And especially in Shadow Paladin, because Shadow Paladin doesn't have any kind of guard restriction. So this card really, really is lowballing it. It can work because if you're retiring excessively of your own field, then you at least have something in those cases that you can at least put out some pressure because it gets 10 extra 10k. So for that I give it two stars, but it's really dipping to the more to the one star category though. Alright, next up we have the grade 3 version of uh, the grade 1 that I just talked about, Ferris Knight Loic. And same skill, only this time it's on the grade 3, and the grade 3 doesn't have a marker. And that makes the card very bad, because you need to have the markers to Shadow Paladin to put out the pressure that you need. And your grade 3s are very key cards in the deck with Dark Dictator, Phantom Blaster, Dark Dragon, and I believe um, the card, uh, the other grade 3 we're going to talk about, is also a grade 3 that really is useful in the deck, so that's why I only give it one star for this card. Alright, next up we have Cursed Lancer, and this is a little bit of a uh, head-scratcher for me, because uh, I've seen a lot of people talking about this is a very good card, in, of course, in Premium, because you can use its 
uh, continuous skill that needs to be called over record circle in addition to your opponent's effects like uh, Rinna to uh, and to basically uh, counter their attack or by or at least minusing the amount of pressure they can put out with the deck so that way I can see it work but in standard this is a little bit awkward because you're excessively even more minusing and for that minusing you can get some counter charge from it and it's a strong card that you can give, uh, get gain another 10k but the fact that you need to call over a rear guard is very weird. I'm wondering why they even why they did that. So that's still a head scratcher for me. But the amount power that it can gain and the fact that it is a counter charge option makes it a lot better, and that's why I give it three stars. But I think I'm, I'm I have the feeling that I'm overlooking something with the card. So if you guys uh, see something with this card that I'm missing, then please let me know in the comments down below because. I, I, I still have some doubts about this one. Alright, next up we have Dark Mage Badaba Car. And it's basically one of those cars that helps you fill the field and to give power away and at the end of the turn that Dreamlands is retired. But actually what you want to use this card for is to get more cars in the field and then instantly retire them for this guy. Or another card that needs to be retiring your own units. But I believe it's only only at this point only Phantom Blaster Diablo, uh, Phantom Blaster Dragon. And, um, and that makes this card what useful. And the fact that it also has a force marker makes it even better. And the fact that it's now a 13k base instead of I believe the original one was 9k makes this card very decent. And I, I will give it 3 stars. I, you can say maybe 4 stars but your great free line is, a pre is already pretty tight. So depending on how you want to build it and where you want to make, put your main focus, this card is a good option to run multiple copies of. Alright, next up we've got uh, the PG Sentinel Dark uh, Shield Mech, 5 stars. Alright, now we're getting into the Blaster support. And basically now we have Blaster uh, Dagger for the Grade 1. And his skill is this one, uh, this can go into the soul, and but it has still the un on hit skill when it uh, attacks or the attack is boost, so it's reminiscent of Theo. And you can basically uh, uh, retire one of your opponent's rearguards, or your opponent choose one of his rearguards. And you want to use this card in combination with uh, Blaster Rapier, because those two work very, very well together. And it also has Blaster in the name, so it helps with Blaster Rapier's skill to uh, condition to require it. And I think it's a pretty decent card to have in your deck because it's not a retire option. It's also a Soul Charge option that doesn't. Uh, top deck the soul because it's just a unit that goes into the soul and it helps with the bluster engine because it has a bluster in the name So that's why I give it four stars because it's a good tool card that works with the engine and with everything that comes around with the card All right now we have bluster rapier and As you can see she needs to have a lot of bluster cards in the field to gain that extra power And that's why blessed dagger is a very good card But as you can see with our other skill if you combine her with blaster dagger you can basically, when that column hits, you're retiring two uh, units of your opponent's field. That's, so that's pretty big. And if you combine it with uh, Phantom Bluster Dragon, that's basically a complete field wipe because you're retiring five cards of your opponent's field. And that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And that's why Bluster Rapier is a pretty good card. And if you combine it with Bluster Dragon and Bluster Rapier and Bluster Dark, then you have a lot of options and that's why I said maybe Blaster X will be run if you are having trouble to combine to get her uh, condition off but I think that's not really that necessary honestly but because of her good versatility and because she well, uh, is well rounded in the Blaster engine I will give this card 4 stars because it's a very good card and it gives a lot of pressure on your opponent with a combination of Blaster Dagger or multiple Blaster Daggers or mul multiple Blaster Rapiers. Alright, next up we have Skull Witch Nemain. And I was honestly not that fond of this card in the beginning. Uh, because when, it, when she was first announced I was like, mm, maybe we'll get some great 5k uh, cards that we can superior call. Well, at the end it was basically only her and Triggers. But after I've seen the Bushiroad's uh, livestream fight of Shadow Paladin against, I believe, Pill Moon. Yeah, Pill Moon. We saw how well this card can function if it goes off early game. Because you can filter the deck like crazy. You can even uh, fill up the field to, 
basically for free because it rests, rests one and you get a unit, so no counter blast, no soul blast, no nothing. And it helps with deck filling, it helps with filling the field, it also helps with fu fueling your Phantom Blaster Dragon. And we've seen how crazy that ca can spiral out of control if this card does its job very well. And that's why I'm, that's, so that was my turning point of saying, alright, this card is pretty decent and with potential uh, future support, this could be even getting better if uh, we have triggers with effects or we have other 5k cards that are very good to be able to search out with her. So that's why I give this card definitely a 4 star card because I think a lot of people are going to try running her in the deck and it's just a good option to fill out the field without even wasting your counter blast. Alright, next up we have Black Sage Charon and she's basically your counter charge uh, option that you actually want to run instead of the Curse Lancer in my uh, honest opinion because it doesn't really waste something on your field and the only downside is that you need to call her in, on the field but she's a very good card to combine with uh, the Dark Dictator for example so if you call her with the Dark Dictator his skill will become free well, you can also co combine it with Darkness, Maiden, and Maka. We're going to talk after this card. They both have the skill that you need, uh, that you can superior call something on the field, and that will trigger Charon's skill. So that's why it's a pretty good, decent card. And because it's, she works well with two very key cards from the deck, I think it's a, basically a four off or a three off in most decks. And that's why I definitely give this card five stars because it's your main counter charge engine. It works well with the other strong cards and. It's basically everything that you need to keep on uh, uh, rolling the pressure train within with Shadow Paladin. So speaking of Charon, uh, we're going. We now have Darkness Maiden and Maka. As you can see, her skills a little bit similar to the Dark Dictator in the fact that you call Rigo to the field, but and that you, but instead you retire something of your opponent's field. You can then draw a card, and if you combine it with Charon, you can even counter charge and get another 5k on the field. So. Those two work very well together, you can build a, build a strong column. So yeah, it's a really good decent card and uh, Maka also works with the other great ones or zeros depending on what you want to call. You can even call uh, Witch in the main, it can also then call another card depending on how you want to chain things. So I think it's a pretty good card. Drawing is a lot of, uh, is basically very important for Shadow Paladin to keep adding cards to your hand to be able to sacrifice more rear guards. So this is a very good key card for the deck, so I give this one 5 stars. And now we're getting to the last card, and basically the boss monster of this set, because it's the poster boy of uh, basically the box stopper and uh, of all the posters that we've seen, and that's Phantom Blaster Dragon. And I've been calling his name pretty uh, quite, uh, quite a lot of times during this video, because a lot of cards work around this thing, and it's basically what's been hyping the deck uh, since the first cards have been released or that his art has been shown that it's being in, released in this set. And his skill is very reminiscent of the old version that it retires three things, gain power, gain a crit. But uh, the fact that you're, it's also now retiring stuff from your opponent's field makes it a very good card because a lot of decks now revolves around rear guards. The only clan that I think doesn't really get hurt by this thing is Grand Blue because they will re or are either retiring their own stuff or they can just resurrect it back the next turn or they don't really have that uh, much rigors on the field to begin with. But against Oracle Think Tank this is pretty much uh, a turn destroyer. The only thing that can save them is a Promised Daughter but it's only one rigor that stays in the field. All their other key cards are dead. Uh, every Exile clans will be destroyed by this thing. A lot of Forest clans cannot deal with the amount of rear guards that are kept retiring because uh, Royal Paladin cannot keep up with the amount of rear guards that Shadow Paladin can retire. And also the fact that Shadow Paladin does have counter charge options. So that makes this card very good. But the cherry on top is the fact that this thing also can shoot for damage. Granted, that skill won't be used that much in the game, but for some odd reasons that your opponent is sitting on low damage, this effect is very necessary because, as I said, this clan doesn't have any guard uh, restrictions because this card doesn't have any guard restrictions and if you expected one to have one, there will be the VR in most cases. But it, uh, the Shepin doesn't have one, Dark Dictator doesn't have one, Car, Banawar Car doesn't have one and Phantom Blaster Dragon doesn't have one. So shooting the damage is very important when your opponent has enough guard options and you still want to force them to those 
to the 5 damage range where everything can kill them and they're forced to guard everything. So, it's a very decent card. Well, it's not a very decent card, it's a very great card. And that's why I definitely give this one 5 stars. It does what it does, and believe me, the rear guard retiring hurts a lot more than you expect when you see this thing on, on just on paper. And that's why I think Chopin got a bright future, future ahead. But, they will have some issues against Protect Clans and, or against opponents that has 2-3 to three PGs on hand. They need to get those away from the hand first. So as we have seen, Shadow Paladin has a lot of different options, from superior calling rear guards uh, to uh, drawing a lot of cards from the deck, to deck filtering, to re retiring from your opponent's field, but your opponents can choose what they can do, calling superior calling from hand. They have a lot of different uh, tech options and different ways to play things, and it makes them very versatile to build deck, but also a little bit awkward, because some things retire off their own field, others expect that you have a lot of more regals than your opponent, other skills are retiring stuff from your opponent. So making a good balance in deck is going to be the key uh, issue for beginners or the first weeks of Shadow Pattern players. And I think about now we're going to see how it will function in Japan as they have, uh, I believe, two weeks time, uh, already have two, two weeks to be able to practice with the decks. And I'm very curious of what we're going to do in the future. If we're getting more retirement options or more retirement center skills cards like Phantom Blaster Dragon. And I think we will, but time only time will tell. Hope you guys enjoyed this set review. Leave in the comments down below if, you're, uh, if you uh, are agree with my opinions on how the cards are rated. And what I think about the cards or how they're going to be uh, presenting themselves in the meta. And if you're curious on the other decks, then keep watching uh, up the upcoming days because... Tomorrow is Pill Moon's turn, and after that, Dark Regulars, and after that, we're going to talk about Zambaku in Murakumo. I'm Mr. Timelip, and I'll see you guys in the next one.